So we have the pleasure to talk about uh, virtual platforms and, the, and all the, the integration and interoperability between them and the networks. So yeah, we have the pleasure to have with us uh, really big professionals from the from the industry. So let's give them first of all a brief a brief introduction, one minute introduction more or less uh, of your companies and what you do. Okay, hello everyone. Thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Luis Manuel Fernandez. I'm CEO of Alvearium. We are creating a platform that is replicating real spaces in a virtual world. It means, let's consider uh, this very beautiful world which is called Metaverse, but uh, we are trying to do it in a real space. Uh, for example, to replicate events, to replicate culture spaces, to replicate work spaces as well. And in that platform, we will have every one of us a personal space, we call it Alvea, where we will be able to share content, uh, upload content from other social networks, and be able to have fun and entertainment with other people, friends, followers, and so on. So thanks for, for, for this time. OK. Thank you, Lisma. And then we have Ernest from Nucleo. Well, so thank you very much. So um, hello, everyone. Nucleo, well, I'm uh, the CEO and co-founder at Nucleo and Neco Capital. Um, well, so there is two hats. So from one side, we do, um, we are a business factory, so we create new companies. Uh, every year, so, so, so far, we've created uh, 15 companies, companies such as uh, Housefy, Kintai, Games for a Living, etc. But more and more, we're working on the uh, Web3 space and Metaverse, so we, we are doing a lot of uh, different platforms, um, focused companies. So we, in fact, we have one here that is immobilized as well, and uh, and uh, well, there is another one that is uh, mini coders. That is a platform for learning in the in the metaverse space. So so far, so we've done these 15 companies. Um, in total, the group is about 800 people, and then we have a fund attached uh, to the um, to the venture builder where we can invest in the companies that we created. So. So th those are the activities that mainly I'm focused on. Okay, amazing. Thank you. And we have Alberto, uh, not Daniel. Uh, Alberto Manzano from Enware. Sure. Uh, well, I can explain. I, I was a backup plan for Daniel initially, but uh, well, here I am. I'm the CPO, uh, engineer. If I get to take it, please stop me or question, ask whatever you want to. But uh, it all started with a really simple question, and it is, uh, why do you need a NASA lab in order to play a video game? What we do at Enware is basically cloud streaming. So we allow people to play whatever game they may want from retailers such as Steam, Epic Games, Ubisoft, and you get to synchronize your account and you get to play it through our platform without really having to invest a thousand bucks in a console or even a GPU if you even know what it is. And you get to play whatever game you want. It doesn't no matter where you are. We are lowering and democratizing the access of video games, which is kind of a revolution, let's say. For sure. So yes, let's start with the technical part. We will continue with Alberto, and let's, let's talk about from the technical point of view, uh, talking about virtual infrastructure and virtual networks and virtual platforms. Um, what do you think? Which are the biggest challenges for virtual platforms and connectivity? Well, in my experience, at least in, at least in our case, uh, infrastructure is really expensive, and if you are talking about GPUs, it's even more. So nowadays, being profitable in this kind of a space is really a big challenge. Uh, and also the usability of your platforms. There's this kind of uh, trade-off between interoperability when we are talking about metaverse, when we are talking about AR, VR, and also in this case, for example, cloud computing. That's, for example, in our case, we try to get different channels, not just through native applications in Android, iOS, or whatever, but even through web browsers. I think that's where it's going to come the true revolution, because through all these Web3 technologies, we are trying to get more people access to all these technologies without really having to well, worry about how do they work underneath. So it's why do I have to worry about, well, how does the GPU work? Well, I don't want to, but this technology allows me to do so. So the biggest challenges are usually costs, let's say, and usability. OK, so really interesting. And um, regarding the user case, we have here a platform. So it's really innovative and, and, and it's an amazing platform. 
So what is your opinion about, about this? Well, for us, uh, we have many challenges as a startup, as you can imagine, and here are two uh, parts that could help us uh, as investors, trainers as well, or even cloud uh, computing providers. Um, when you want to replicate a realistic space in a digital or virtual world and try to be able to provide these uh, visual uh, spaces to a lot of people, because our business model is based on the more people is in the platform, the more income we get. Very easy. When you want to do that, uh, you find out that currently uh, the technologies that we have have some limitations about um, there are two main engines or gaming engine is called and, and we use it because at the end of the day the design is working inside. We are talking about Unreal or Unity and when you look for reality you later cannot be able to achieve everybody's computer or phone and if you want them to enjoy the full experience with a VR headset at the end of the day, not much people have headset right now. So we find out that uh, our business model is complex, technology is progressing a lot, but we are still a little uh, one, two or three steps from what we want to achieve, right? So currently we are doing some pilots, some prototypes, and we can provide these experiences in a small cases as we did uh, one month ago. It's true that we are right now in a very good ecosystem in Madrid in game where we have a lot of possibilities to be to improve it, but uh, we are a little uh, one step or two step farther from what we want to provide. But I'm sure that in, in later talks we will talk about it. Uh, something is coming big for that. <laughs> for sure, we will talk about the Googles and the VR Googles. Just one question for the technical part: Unity or Unreal? <laughs> I mean, we don't produce the content, but we integrate with them. But if I were to choose, Unreal allows you to, well, make more powerful the video games, although it's more complex to cooperate with. I wanted, okay. I wanted to have a debate today, but I agree with him so far. Yeah, <laughs> no, no debate, no debate. No in this debate. Yeah. Okay. So, Ernest, um, regarding and talking about business focus, uh, in Nucleo you create and invest in companies, as you said. So, what is your point of view about this market? Well, so... First of all, uh, any startup working on, on edge technologies like uh, gaming, for instance, uh, or Web3, so do, they, need, they need to rely on platforms. And, and, and one of the main problems of the, of the startups is the scalability. So if you want to scale and if you want to grow up and attract the more users as you can, um, the, only, the only way to do it is on a, via an affordable uh, platform like you know, like you were, you were talking about, like, you know, things like that, where you can access not having graphics, uh, graphics cards, etc. so very expensive uh, equipment. But that was, uh, you know, from talking about very deeply on the, on the, on the blockchain uh, philosophy, you know, the distributed ledgers, etc. so we was meant to that, not because, because all the powerful, all the money that the people spend in platforms is a lot. So, we focus mainly when you have to invest in a company or you have to create a company if the company can scale. So for instance, we, had a, we, we faced a, a, a problem in Games for a Living. Games for a Living is a gaming company created by Manuel Sor, by us, and as well as Trip Hawkins, the founder of Electronic Arts in the company. And um, so we, we created a platform, a, a gaming platform that is using, is using a, a token, a Web3 token, where you can, where you can play with the, with the with, with, with all the games, native and, and third-party games. So the problem where if you are navigating through the blockchain, so you, you need a lot of transactions per second. So in the end, if you have not enough uh, technology or the, or the technology itself is not prepared to do that, it wouldn't allow thousands of hundreds of thousands of users playing at the same time. Things like on the metaverse side, you know, the limitations of Roblox, Minecraft, etc. So you can wait and have a tequila yourself, and then see. Well, that's going to be very tough, you know. And or you can you can just face, you know, what is going to happen, and then see if the company can 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 grow or not. So that is one of the main criteria. Of course, you know, there is more. There is people. There is business side, etc. But this this model is uh, growing. That's that's a reality. 
and you know we need more and more uh, engine power and so therefore the, the platforms uh, you know the distributor they, they can be and the wider they can be much better for investment. Okay, thank you very much. Also um, regarding the growth of these technologies and, it, and these platforms, uh, everyone is talking normally about interoperability okay between them. So people normally ask us, okay, is there one metaverse or is there, or are there like hundreds of metaverse? No so, we are used to one internet. You don't go in the, you know, uh, telefonica internet or with a phone internet. You go into the internet, okay? So now people are asking, okay, when I want to go inside the metaverse, how can I do it? Yeah, for sure there are a lot of platforms, a lot of, lot of players now. But uh, what do you think about interoperability between these platforms? Uh, for example, Alberto, what do you think about this? Uh, hard question, I have to say. But uh, the main key or question even I have to throw back it's what do you consider to be the metaverse nowadays and based on that I tough, may answer tough, back. Tough, tough question tough <laughs> question because it's like so prostituted this 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 this, this, no, this term so. but, but right now if you were to choose like one platform or one project like what would you say in terms of interoperability for example uh, that it's the current metaverse well, for sure I will choose mine okay which is <laughs> utopian okay <laughs> But uh, but yeah yeah. For and example, starting from my from for example my platform and growing into interoperability, for example with Alvearium. Um, but what do you think the, the main challenges or how do you see the future of interoperability it's between these? It's better a third party talks. Because yeah, we because talk, we, we are talking about us, <laughs> okay. our book. <laughs> okay, but but that I mean it was a, a good example. Um, <laughs> I think that the key goes through the hardware nowadays. Uh, when, when you want to get into the metaverse, you usually need to, to be immersive. Otherwise, you're not feeling the experience. Nowadays, we know the metaverse by what maybe in the past, maybe Facebook was trying to do with uh, their meta uh, name change. And also, for example, with Matthew Ball, like they, he threw like a really good book about what the game in the metaverse is. Uh, the key goes through a really immersive platform. I mean, we have seen it, well, what's trying maybe Apple doing with the AR, VR glasses nowadays, or even with Meta, Pico, and all the glasses that are coming nowadays. I think that the key is uh, the platform on itself, who is going to provide this metaverse, has to be accessible through the same channel, and usually it's the internet. So I think it should be based on web browser. If you are capable of accessing this metaverse through a web browser, I think all of these platforms that nowadays we get access to as glasses, uh, can operate within each other and get access to the same metaverse. It may, in the future, maybe through gloves, through maybe like a ballistic, I don't know what the name of it is, but there are a lot of haptic hardware nowadays you can get access to, get more immersive experience. And I think the key on that, it has to be the internet or that web browser, a really open source uh, project or protocol to everybody integrate with. So what do you think about this, Guzma? I would say one of the main parts um, will be the assets every person has, right? The digital asset, because we are going to have a replica of our persona, of our ID, our identity. We call it uh, avatars, unless Apple, they call it persona right now. And we have wearables. Huh? Or digital twins. Or digital twins, yeah. Uh, we, we are going to have um, wearables, assets, uh, we are going to start owning things in that digital world more and more. There's many early adopters that already have it. And when you want to enjoy an experience that you don't have in one platform but you have in another, for example, you want to, do, to go to, to visit a concert in U Utopian and you're in Alvearium in your personal space and there should be a gate let's say uh, virtually or wherever. Uh, technically speaking, I think what Alberto said makes sense. But at the end of the day, when you go to that other platform, you should still have your own personal uh, belongings, right? Uh, wearables, assets, whatever you want to call it. I think uh, through blockchain, it's one of the technologies that will allow us to have the opportunity to keep between different platforms but we also know that different platforms could use different blockchains. So there will be the famous bridges. I think that uh, there is a long story to be written. Possibilities there will be for sure, but it will be needed for sure. For, for UX perspective, it's needed. It's a must. And regarding business, regarding Web3 gaming, for example? Say that 
I mean, if you if you're missing the point that you know what are the product, or what are the your consumer needs when talking about the metaverse, you have to see the limitations of each metaverse. For instance, talking about one of our own companies, and I'm biased in here, but we face that problem again, and it's called Mini Coders. Mini Coders is this you know learning platform that uses metaverse uh, experiences to teach the kids how to code. You know, and how to get skills and, and, and you know, the, the basics of coding. So the problem was, you know, the main limitations was that it must to be cross-platform, you know, you, it has to be, I mean, you have to, to, to enter by different screens. You have to get security limitations. So as you are, you know, you're talking about kids and it's, it's, there is a lot of, it's, it's a very sensitive user. So you cannot allow an adult from everywhere just to jump into the into this metaverse and fake itself a, a persona and trying to whatever. I mean, it could be very, very dangerous. And from the parent perspective, they, they're just very worried about. So these concerns must be uh, defined on the metaverse as well. So who are the public focus when talking about a metaverse itself? So to me, from the business perspective, I'm not, not that out knowledge as, as you know, as my colleagues or from the technical perspective, but I would say that I would never uh, scale a, a company, you know, if the market is super fragmented and you cannot grow, you know, just by sparing your own product in, in, in a platform that works and integrate uh, by an interoperability way. That's it. So now I have a question for the audience. Um, how many of you have uh, used uh, VR headsets? So this is the penetration of the VR headsets. Now we can see it like... I would like to see all at the same time. Because yeah, so is, uh, VR headsets... It's not that bad, eh? No, wow. in this audience it's not that bad. How, not many, bad. how many of them, of them they do have the Apple ones? That's completely a compulsory question now that we are going to talk about. Okay. And uh, just one question more. Um, one more question will be, do you use it every day? Do you use it every week? Every day? Every week? Hands up, no? That sounds OK. So this is important, and it's important for the next question. So within this week, we've seen the launch of the, of the Apple Vision Pro Googles. So uh, I would like to know from our panelists, uh, what is your opinion? How will this affect our market? Can we start? Maybe we can start with Ernest this time. <laughs> the I, hot. I, I would if I could be a guru <laughs> of that, you know. But I, <coughs> but I, well, I don't know. Honestly, I think everything that Apple, Apple has done so far, it has been a very successful thing lately. So, but if we consider that Microsoft just sold 300,000 of those Google before. Uh, so we don't know yet how it's gonna how it's gonna perform, but we we must understand that the adoption is something that it comes from. I mean, that's that's one. You know, we you remember probably the the younger of you know that when we were using Blackberries, so everyone was was. I mean, we got a lot of use to use the keyboard, and then we thought that wow, I'm not gonna type into a screen, so the Apple is not gonna work. I remember that the iPhone is not gonna work because you know nobody's happy using, using a keyboard on the screen and, and now nobody considers to use another one such just typing on the screen. So this could be a thing like that. I don't know. The adoption is what, what makes the things uh, work and if they, I think they have done an amazing research so I'm nobody to, <laughs> to argue about that. But uh, let's see. Let's see, you know. But uh, in terms of business, I mean, if the adoption is huge, it could open amazing opportunities. Uh, from every every kind of business perspective. I mean, not only gaming or I mean augmented reality solutions, etc. I mean, because there is a lot. There's a, a whole ecosystem that surrounds everyone. That everything that Apple uh, does that it is is huge. That's that's what I see. Apple is Apple. We know this. So, Alberto, what do you think about? I was laughing, I mean, uh, I'm probably not the target customer for the Apple VR glasses. Although I have to say it's, 
a really fine product. I mean, we all can tell from usually what Apple uh, produces, but I, I see a big fluke, and it's that two hours battery lifetime. For me, that would be like a maybe a no go, but I mean, it, it depends on the on the person probably. Um, but the um, AR, VR glasses. I mean, uh, as, as the ones who have raised the hands, like uh, I even own a pair of MetaQuest. Uh, I may use them from time to time, but the, the biggest problem I see with them is uh, you don't get to connect with others. I get to have this solitary experience. Maybe if we push forward the ecosystem, for example, through Metaverse of these kind of social applications, we may see more adoption of these kind of classes. But now, right now, for example, even more if you are considering the Apple ones, like they are 3,000, even more, I think. Uh, they are considered to be like a luxury product. I mean, right now, I mean, these technologies are trying to even lower the costs and getting more people access to the internet through lowering the barrier of the initial investment, not even increasing it. So um, I, I see, I mean, in my opinion, definitely, I mean, I may be totally wrong, but I don't see a mass adoption of these kind of glasses. I see them more an, as an appliance, for example, in the professional market, rather than in a domestic use. Although probably many people, just yes, because it's Apple, may buy the product, and they may not worry about why are they charging like 3,000 if we had, for example, glasses that are really good in the past, and they were 1,000 bucks, and they didn't get that adoption. And they were not really bad. But I mean, it's about the usage you can use with those glasses. So uh, I don't know. I, I see the potential on these glasses, specifically in one technology. I'm sorry for taking too much time. But I think it's the eye tracking. I mean, uh, I, I was using MetaQuest in the past, and they didn't have eye tracking. Once I tried one glasses with eye tracking, my mind blown. Like, uh, this is really good. Being capable of writing, just looking on, on, or for example, where you are looking, you are focusing more the audio, that, that's crazy. That's really good. And that interface and the usage of these glasses, I think it's going to be definitely a really key and a big role in the adoption of these, uh, of these AR and VR glasses. Totally. Thank you. So for $3,500, do, do, will you buy them in the audience? No? Complicated, no? OK. This is also good, eh? It's a customer. For 300 per month during 13 months, you will buy it? This is Neither. That is 100. <laughs> OK. So what is your opinion about this? Well, as you know, I have many opinions. Uh, I will try to be concrete for the time we have. Uh, I will try to state things that are realistic. If we talk about the future of joining physical and digital worlds, it will happen. I think nobody can doubt it. If we talk about which is the best technology right now in the world that will have this kind of uh, point to mix together the real world and the digital world, is Apple's one, right now. Considering those two factors, we can talk about the price. I am against that price. We had big, big expectations for our project because, as I said from the beginning, we want to have realistic uh, activities from real world to do in the digital world. So we had a big expectation on, on Apple. We think the features that it, have, it has are very, very, very good. And the potential is much bigger because right now they have opened for developers in order to invent whatever they consider with the tools they give. They don't say, you are going to do this. They say, you can do this or that, and then let's imagine, right, to the developers. So I will say, it's going to work. And I will say, as iPhone, for example, it will not happen, the mass adoption, until the third or fourth version. But that it will work, I'm almost sure. Later than what we expected or wanted, but I think it will work. OK. So now we have a little time for some questions. Does anyone in the audience? Uh, we have. Ah, so we have to stop now. Okay. We still have four minutes. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. Okay. Ah, okay, okay. Okay. So, so thank you, thank you, everyone for. Thank you.